गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन माय नेम इज तुषार सुगंधी एंड आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट आई एम ए लॉग स्नैपशॉटिंग टुडे सो वेलकम टू सियाटल दोज हु आर ट्रैवलिंग फ्रॉम मल्टीपल प्लेसेस अक्रॉस द ग्लोब इट्स अ ब्यूटीफुल वेदर हियर आउट आउटसाइड ओके सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड अ लिटिल बिट अबाउट माई सेल्फ आई हैव बीन इन सॉफ्टवेयर इंडस्ट्री फॉर लाइक फिफ्टीन ईयर्स in software security for about 7 and uh, linux security about 4 ish i work for microsoft uh, that's pretty much it uh, so uh, let's let's see what we are going to discuss today i want to discuss uh, what is the motivation for snapshotting iml log uh, it's about kernel memory pressure long running devices without reboots and uh, attestation server side processing uh we also want to just not snapshot the logs but we also have to preserve the integrity of the ima subsystem for remote attestation as and uh, we'll discuss what needs to be done from the kernel side uh to to make the feature work and what needs to be done from the client slash service side to make the feature work and some other design considerations if demo gods are happy with me uh, we'll 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 see a demo q and a would followed by q and a big disclaimer uh, this has been uh, discussed in the community on the ima mailing list and uh, i was fortunate enough yesterday to have a conversation with uh, ima maintainers roberto and mimi so uh, i modified a slide a bit to take their feedback into account but it, I, i'm flying the plane as i'm building it so uh, not everything that i say as part of this presentation would reflect in 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 the final design slash documentation i mean, of course it will evolve this is the current state that i'm representing so uh, let's get into the basics uh, <coughs> of a remote attestation so uh, imagine you have two parties who are talking across the internet alice wants to talk to bob and she wants to get some work done from the bob but before delegating the work to bob she wants to uh, ensure that she can trust uh, bob she wants to ensure that bob is trustworthy uh, alice trust uh, charlie charlie is trusted by alice so uh, what happens is bob sends his information to charlie for verification and charlie vets it and verifies it and sends the verified report to alice so this is kind of normal world uh, in the attestation world alice is a relying party bob is attestee and uh, charlie is verifier slash attester so uh, in cloud era so you have relying parties you have attestees and uh, you have verifiers who are verifying that attestees are trustworthy by checking their various parameters and signals and then sharing those signals with the relying party so that relying party can trust the attestees uh a little bit deeper into the ima world uh, as you have seen yesterday ima is a integrity measurement architecture it's a subsystem it's a kernel subsystem which uh monitors events from the kernel side extends them into a pcr and it has a, a ima log which uh which is in the kernel space so events are recorded into the ima log and that ima log with the signed and uh, <coughs> trust, uh tpm pcr codes is the the user mode agent sends to the remote verifier and the tpm pcr codes since they are signed by tpm you have a chain of trust and root of trust so you can trust those codes and you can replay those uh, entries in ima log uh, and verify that the log is not tampered with and then you can validate the values inside the log and make sure that whether it meets your security bar or not and if everything looks good you send attestation report in form of tokens in form of certificates and what not so that <coughs> the which marks that attestation has succeeded so uh, what is the motivation behind uh, 
IML log snapshotting. It's currently it's a monolithic log which sits in the kernel. Uh, and when we are using it, we observed a few problems and that's why uh, we are proposing to uh, snapshot it. So obviously, uh, kernel and mem uh, user mode memory pressure is one of the issue. And uh, the devices that are really running, running for the lo long time without getting reboots, so uh, stuff accumulates and we need to deal with that. That is another motivation. And we'll get into these motivations in detail and then uh, and uh, as you know, the, the verifier sits in the cloud. It is not local. Uh, it's not uh, a parade scenario as Roberto was discussing yesterday. It is uh, attestation, which is outside of the, of, of the client or the node. So uh, we want to make the remote uh, server side processing fast. So that's another motivation. Uh, so let's dig a little bit deeper into uh, the memory pressure issues. So as I said, IMA log is uh, stored in the kernel memory. And uh, depending on the IMA policy, uh, it can, and the system state, you, you can generate a lot of events. I mean, it measures various critical data, various disk uh, device mapper, block devices coming and going, uh, various file system measurements whenever those files in those file systems are touched. Uh, so it generates a lot of data and with, it is very valuable data. It is needed for attestation, uh, no doubt about that. But depending on the policy, IMA log can grow. And of course, kernel doesn't flush the IMA log. It is ever growing because if you flush it, there is a loss of information and then you cannot replay it on the server side. So, and you cannot uh, validate the tamper proofness of the log that it's not tampered with. So it's a genuine good security design that the IMA log is not flushed currently. Uh, I, I'm just repeating what uh, I said here. Yeah, as I said, truncating it would call irre irrevocable attestation failures. Uh, on the UM side, uh, the, the user mode side, uh, user mode processes combine various logs, you have boot logs, you have, of course, IME is the runtime log, attestation log. And you have to be, sometimes you have to be consistent with the format which server understands. So there is some processing happens on the server side. So this leads up to multiple copies of IME log and you are dealing with a big chunk of IME log, then there is a memory pressure on some user mode processes as well. That's what we have observed. So uh, together, kernel mode and user mode handling of IMA logs add to the memory pressure of the system. And uh, that leads to the next point, which is long running uh, devices, which are with no reboots. Uh, as I said, when IMA log grows, it can only be flushed by the kernel. Uh, it's read only for user mode processes. Uh, and in today's cloud era, where uh, the servers are running for a really, really long time, months, sometimes years, no kidding. And um, we have some industries which depend on these long running servers like gaming industry or e-commerce industry or finance, whatever. So even a blip of few seconds, it, it, it costs them money. I mean, they, they, they just don't accept the gray outs. So uh, to, to flush the IMA log to re, uh, re, relieve the memory pressure, you can warm reboot, you can cold reboot, but that needs time and even few seconds of delay is unacceptable. So what can we do here? That's another motivation. So I'm, uh, the systems are running for a really long time. I'm a log grows and it is non-trivial both from the security threat model point of view and practicality implementation point of view to uh, recover from that <coughs> the bloated memory on, on that node. And uh, the last but not the least, you are sending those logs to, uh, to the remote attestation server. And uh, <clears throat> the server needs to quickly go through the logs, replay them. Uh, you can do seal and seal, that's another story. But if you are doing the replay of the log to match it with the PCR codes, then in that case, you need to <clears throat> really quickly uh, respond. So in the current model, uh, it takes time. The, the, the more the log grows, it takes time for the server to respond. So that's another motivation to uh, solve this problem. Now that we have uh, discussed a few motivations, uh, pra 
I mean, genuine business cases, what, what are the solutions that we have thought about? So one is, uh, how do you trigger the snapshot? Uh, that is one thing that to think of when you are uh, discussing the solutions. Then, of course, you need to uh, persist it, copy it from the kernel memory to some persistent storage or network storage, basically to relieve the memory pressure, but still preserve the information. So how do you do that? And do you need a marker event to logically separate the snapshots per se? It's an optional thing and we'll get into the details of that. And uh, last but not least, truncate the <coughs> in-memory copy of the IMA log. So uh, of course, and on the client side, uh, you need to, uh, client needs to be aware that the kernel supports uh, snapshotting capabilities and it can, it needs to interact and pass over those not not just the single IMA file now on, but multiple snapshot files plus the latest instance in the memory of the IMA file. And of course, server needs to uh, be aware that, hey, the clients which are talking to me can not only sending a single monolithic IMA log, but they are sending uh, in-memory IMA log plus uh, some snapshot files. So uh, these are the things that we need to take into account when we are talking about the solutions. So let's dig deeper into uh, each of the things that I talked about. So one, uh, the triggering mechanism, how do you trigger the snapshots? It can be triggered by uh, a user mode agent that is running on the system. And it could be as simple as having a syscall and it could be a file open and that triggers the, uh, I mean, you can implement that syscall in, in IMA subsystem and uh, can start trigger of the snapshot. Uh, some uh, kernel mode events like you are kxx of booting into uh, the new kernel, that can be another logical point where you want to uh, trigger the snapshot. Uh, there could be thresholds that can be defined in the IMA policy and those thresholds can be uh, trigger snapshot after every 10,000 events in the IMA log. And IMA does keep track of number of uh, measurements in the, in the log are little bit less uh, reliable, but harder to implement thing, but you, you can keep a track of memory of how much a, a memory has IMA log consumed. And if it reaches certain threshold, and uh, if that threshold hits, then you can say that, hey, trigger the snapshotting. Or it could be a combination of them. I mean, uh, there is no reason why multiple snapshot triggers can't be present. Uh, so that is about snapshot uh, triggers. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we discussed about the, the snapshot aggregate slash snapshot marker, which logically separates two snapshots. And uh, it can be optional, uh, just a disclaimer, but uh, the, the, the goal or the purpose of the snapshot aggregate marker is uh, to make the service side process of the IMA log more efficient. And we'll get into the technical details how uh, basically, we can use some events to uh, denote that the snapshot has been taken and the server can exploit those events to uh, make the <coughs> service server side processing more efficient. Uh, yeah, a little bit detailed into the aggregate event. Uh, it can be a simple empty event with just the event name. Uh, those who are familiar with uh, IMA template, you have event name, event template, event data, and PCR in which uh, you are extending the event and digest and so on and so forth. So you can have just the event name, or you can say that, hey, give me the current timestamp, very cheap and simple, or just keep a counter that how many snapshots have been taken so far and just increment that counter. Or it could be something sophisticated, which Asterix very expensive, like uh, getting the PCR states uh, from from the TPM and those are eventually used for replay and then uh, calculate the final value. It can be done from the kernel mode, it can be done from the user mode. Maybe doing it from the user mode logically makes sense. Doing it from the kernel mode clearly is very expensive and if we want to go to that route, it needs to be well justified. 
maybe we can get away without using the, this complicated snapshot marker. As I said, it's, it's an optional thing. I mean, uh, it would, things would still work and we'll see on the service side how we need to be uh, stateful. Uh, <coughs> anyways, moving forward. So uh, snapshot trigger mechanism, snapshot aggregate marker event. What next? We have persistent storage location. So far, the uh, IMA log has been in security. Well, it, it's in the kernel memory. It, uh, and uh, now when you want to move to the some persistent location, the relying part is the agent. You, you can have different agents running on the node for different purposes. One is for the certificate management. One is for, I don't know, uh, talking to mail server. Or there could be one is for <coughs> OS update agent and whatever. So. Uh, Multiple agents need this information, so uh, uh, the, the location where uh, the snapshot R needs to be stored needs to be well known, it needs to be standardized. Uh, it can be configured by IMA policy, you, currently it is not there, but uh, you can have an entry in the IMA policy which says that, uh, hey, this is my storage location for for snapshots and of course, I mean, you can have a K config such that the IMA policy stays read only and it is not appendable at uh, runtime. So it is a robust, secure uh, location. <clears throat> I mean, the, the, the path is immutable. The location can disappear and that's a separate problem. But as long as you have a a reliable location, the relying parties can take dependency on that location. And you can do, once you have the location, you can do things like IMA can provide a sim link uh, to be consistent with that location so that when you are adding, you are uh, referring to the IMA log from its current location, it points to actually location on disk. Or you can use file systems like Fuse, uh, which was recommended by some people on, in, in the community when we were having this discussion in, on the IMA mailing thread, mailing list that use the file systems to snitch snapshots so that it appears like a single monolithic file, but it is actually multiple files. So uh, these are a few things uh, that we uh, considered when uh, we were designing uh, this feature. So going, if, uh, I just sh I shared this diagram without uh, snapshotting. Uh, now with snapshotting, you have kernel mode uh, copy of the IMA log, and you have uh, snapshots. So uh, <coughs> so let's uh, play uh, a, a high level workflow. How how things will work out when uh, in on, on the client. So uh, you on the <coughs> on the kernel side, you have an IMA log. Let's say you have event E1 and E2 in the IMA log. And uh, on the user space, you have a snapshot file, which is currently empty. And this control fly file, it was earlier part of the discussion. So that's a remnant in my uh, presentation, but we can get away without this control file. So, but for the sake of discussion, let's let's pretend that we are dealing with this control file. So, uh, some of the trigger happens, and once the trigger happens, the snapshot aggregate event gets generated in the by IMA in the kernel, which can be uh, a PCR digest of extend one, uh, extend of event one plus event two, and then uh, you can copy, kernel can copy the event, uh, the event one and event two from uh, kernel memory to the control file. Technically, it can directly be copied to, copied to the, its final destination on the disk, and that can be done by user mode process as well. Uh, and then when user mode says that, hey, I'm done copying, you can uh, finalize, it or you can truncate the you can truncate the in-memory uh, events 
then when IMA gets that signal, IMA truncates it. But the snapshot aggregate event stays. So uh, and the, when the when the new events come, uh, they can continue appending to uh, the existing in-memory IMA log. So you are left with in-memory portion of the IMA log plus a snapshot. And when you have multiple uh, such triggers happening, then you can you will accumulate multiple snapshots, but they will be on the disk, not in the kernel memory. So uh, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, the server side processing, the the stuff that I talked about, the the marker event, which I claimed it will help with uh, making the service server side processing more efficient. So let's pretend that uh, on the, on the top side you have a, a monolithic IMA log with events E1 to E12. And let's see uh, some specific events. Uh, you have a device mapper, you have an encrypted disk, and you are loading that disk and resuming that disk. So let's say that that is event 8 and event 10. And event il, il, uh, 11 is uh, SLinux policy hash. And by the way, these events are measured in IMA log today. I mean, I was proud to do that work with the, uh, critical data and device mapper work. Uh, so, uh, they, they, uh, these events can be used to uh, on the server side to say that, hey, does my client meet a specific uh, disk configuration or SLNX policy hash to, to trust that client? And uh, in the snapshotting world, let's say you create a snapshot after every three events and store it on the disk. So, that is the bottom part. <clears throat> so, uh, notice that here our marker events are being added and this is the complicated sophisticated marker event that I talked about which has the, the PCR hash uh, and as I mentioned earlier, it can be also given on the side by the user mode process. So, it does not necessarily need to be a part of the IMA log. But for the sake of discussion, let us pretend that it is part of the IMA log and the now on the server side, uh, you are rather than getting the full uh, monolithic IMA log, you just get uh, the latest copy, truncated copy of the IMA log. And now that we have event 789, it, it is the starting uh, PCR state for that event. And when you do the replay of the uh, extend operation of for E10, E11, and E12, then you arrive at the same. Uh, PCR codes and then you can say that and only only this much information is sufficient for you to uh, validate that this portion of the IMA log was not tampered with. It is signed by uh, TPM and it is validated by the PCR codes. So, uh, if your uh, attestation policy says that uh, I will succeed the attestation if the SLNX policy hatch matches my uh, expected value, then you do not need the, all these events. Or uh, you say that, hey, my device mapper device needs to have this configuration, but the resume does not tell me the sufficient information about, the, uh, about that device. So that information is present in the load. So you need to stitch event 10 with event 8. And when I am, uh, the server says that, hey, I only have event 10, where is the event 8? So uh, then it can ask. Uh, the attestation client give me one more snapshot from your repository. So then you are just dealing with this snapshot, oh sorry, this snapshot which is denoted by disk and uh, the in memory copy. You do not need uh, the previous two events to uh, succeed the attestation. Uh, what else? Of course, there are drawbacks. I mean, there is no free lunch, right? You can, so far with the monolithic IMA uh, logs, you just pass the entire log and you don't need to uh, save the state of the clients on, on, your, on the server side. Uh, but if we are going with this approach, you and you are not dealing with seal and seal, but you are doing the replay method for attestation then uh, you need to preserve some state. And as I mentioned, the, there are different types of marker. Remember, just the event name and no value. 
or timestamp or PCR digest or the last case snapshot. So what this table on the server side does is uh, it tells whether the client was ever attested. If it was never attested, then the server would say that give me the in-memory one and give me the all the snapshot files because this was never attested. I can't trust this guy before analyzing each and every uh, each and every event in the IML log. But if it was attested until some point, which let's say before the presentation, uh, before this presentation started, so you can say that, okay, the events before this were already attested. Just give me the snapshot or the in-memory log after, uh, after this value. And then you should still be able to replay and uh, attest the remaining one. Given the previous attestation had succeeded for the older snapshot files or the PCR digest method or you can say that I had attested until snapshot 4. Uh, so if you are giving me a, an in kernel memory IML log which says that the system is at uh, snapshot 7, then the server would say that, okay, give me 5.6 uh, five, and in memory 7, then I'll be able to do the attestation. So, uh, who does what? And this is my earlier uh, push was to uh, try to do everything in kernel so that it is trustworthy, it is measured by IMA. But do we really, I, I mean, security and there is always security and uh, efficiency slash uh, uh, doing things quickly, it, it matters. So efficiency and performance matter, sorry. So, uh, taking those things into consideration, the trigger can be either on the server side or on the user mode side. Uh, it could be, as I said, it could be a kexec soft boot or uh, the number of events, or it could be a user mode process poking kernel that, hey, please generate a snapshot. And as I said, snapshot marker event, it can be generated by the kernel or it can, it's, it's a PCR read, so you can just, uh, use the TPM PCR2 command to uh, generate it from the user mode. There could be some synchronization issues, uh, and as I said, it's optional, uh, but it, it, it's possible. Copy log is obviously a user mode thing because uh, uh, you are just transferring the logs from memory to uh, to the disk at a predetermined location, guided by the IMA policy. But truncate. Uh, has to be in the kernel because as I said earlier, the IMA log memory is controlled by IMA subsystem, uh, not the user. User mode can read it, but only with the root access, but it, it cannot modify it for the security reasons. So truncate has to be performed by, by kernel. Uh, and let's pray that the demo gods are <laughs> happy with me today. So uh, let's see, I'll first show you So uh, ASCII runtime measurements and binary runtime measurements, this stuff already exists. Runtime measurement counts is, uh, uh, keeps the count of uh, runtime measurements. And this snapshot file is the new thing that we added, as I mentioned, the, the control file, which says that trigger the snapshot, or uh, you can just op have a, file system syscall on this and uh, it will trigger the snapshot. So for the time, for this demo, I will use that as an example to trigger the snapshot. So uh, let's say, let's see what we have in the ASCII runtime measurements, by the way. Are we good on time? Yeah. So, by the way, is the text legible? You can read it, right? Okay. So, uh, boot aggregate being the first entry in the snapshot and then kernel version is measured and then you have built-in trusted keys and bunch of other entries. So, this is the initial state of the snapshot, uh, of the IMA log. Then, let's say we have an agent. 
let me open uh, yes so as i said you can trigger you can copy you can truncate so i'm using that snapshot file sys, uh, syscall open call on the snapshot file to trigger the snapshot so let's let's trigger it so uh, okay i have triggered the snapshot and uh, let me open another window to show you what's happening Okay, snapshot aggregate event has been generated in the IML log, but as you can see, the, the previous entries are not yet removed because my agent, user mode agent, haven't copied them to some secure location. So let's copy it. I just want to copy it at some default location. And if I go to the default location, there is a on disk IML log. Of course, it's a binary because I uh, servers usually process the binary log. Ask is for human readability, of course. And then I will uh, instruct the kernel to truncate the uh, IML log. So uh, it, there is some glitch, but uh, the IML log has been truncated. And let's verify that IML log is truncated. Uh, that's it. You have snapshot aggregate, but the previous entries have been removed from the log. Uh, I want to thank, of course, Mimi and Roberto for a very lively discussion on, on, on the mailing list and, of course, uh, in person as well for giving their guidance, feedback, and expertise uh, while designing this stuff. Uh, Paul for, from S Linux, uh, who was also a very huge, huge helping hand in guiding me in the right direction. And Sush, my partner in crime, who was helping with uh, whiteboarding, sound, sound acting as my sounding board, and uh, prototyping some of the stuff. And here are a bunch of references uh, to the mailing list threads that you can go and uh, comment on, or uh, if you want to learn more about this and of course this uh, presentation is also present on the at this location and that's it uh, if you have any questions i'll be happy to uh, answer So generally, with something like this, when you're you're changing what is being measured, uh, you publish a profile for how to appraise um, the the measurements and and the collateral that you're generating. Uh, is the only source of that the patch, or do you have that published as a document? Uh, it is not published uh, for as an RFC yet. Uh, the the design slash approach was published. And as, as you can see, I mean, you are fundamentally changing because if you truncate the IMA log and clients and servers are not yet ready to <coughs> make use of this feature. So it's, it's a data loss and the attestation will simply start failing. So uh, it, it, it's a disruptive change. Uh, it, even though it brings benefits, it's a disruptive change. So uh, we wanted to first vet the idea, get the consensus from the community that are, is it okay to do this? And uh, I think we are getting a consensus that this is needed. This adds value. Uh, we should do it. So now is the right time to send the RFC. Do you have the attestation verification uh, logic it's in an open source project or is that one internal? Uh, you have uh, multiple verifiers in the industry and some implementations are open source like keylime and all and some are internal so uh, of course since the functionality is not yet implemented in the kernel the attestation clients and verifiers are not aware of it so they can't there is no code to implement it so my first focus was on to uh, prove that it is doable and try to do it the kernel side changes first and then once they are upstreamed 
by the by the way i mean if you don't truncate it the stuff should still work as a monolithic log so uh, clients and servers will have time to adopt adopt this feature but i i don't think uh, clients and verifiers have done the work to take make use of this feature because the feature doesn't yet exist in the kernel thanks sure My question is uh, regarding the IMA log. Mm -hmm. Your first uh, comment about it was that it is not, the kernel does not flush the IMA log. And then a couple of slides later, I saw that the kernel can flush the IMA log. Uh, so is that to suggest that the kernel uh, does not automatically flush the IMA log, but it can be, it can flush the IMA log manually? Is that what the message was intended to convey? Okay. So when I said kernel does not flush the IMA log, means that the capability does not exist in the kernel. Oh. Uh, it, it just doesn't, there is no way. Okay. Unless you hard um, warm reboot the system. Okay. So uh, because it's a data loss and it, if you, even modify a single bit in the IMA log, mm -hmm. it goes out of sync with PCR digest and you get PCR mismatch when you are doing that attestation. Okay. So uh, what I showed in the demo mm -hmm. is the pro implementation of the proposal that mm -hmm. in order to tr uh, delete the entries before snapshot, mm -hmm. ca can I do that? And I wrote, uh, so sh wrote the code to uh, demo it can be done. Okay. and. Uh, that's what the demo was. Okay. So it, it is not yet in the kernel. Kernel cannot truncate it. Okay. And uh, is the amount of memory configurable that the IMA log uses? Uh, IMA log memory is not configurable. Uh, there. The, the memory that it, the kernel memory current, that it current, uses. Currently, it is not configurable. Okay. Okay. Uh, there, is, there are uh, some checks. Uh, in the IMA code base, which says that, hey, don't surpass more than half of the RAM, available RAM. Okay. But it is not configurable. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I had a question about uh, two different operations here. You said trigger mm -hmm. that generated the snapshot event, and then copy was mm -hmm. to copy that to disk. It seems odd that maybe they're two separate events because couldn't we get to a situation where if we trigger and some other events were generated before we copied, don't we have an issue right there where the snapshot is a few events back? That can be handled by Truncate and thanks to the suggestion from Mimi yesterday mm. that uh, you, you, when you are giving the Truncate signal, you can say that I have copied until from entry 1 to entry k. So it's safe to delete from 1 to k. Got it. Okay. And uh, whatever was, because user mode is not under control of what will get major and what new entries will get added, right? Right. It can only say that confidently that you, I have copied last k entries, so truncate last k entries. The snapshot can come one immediately k plus one or it could be k plus y. Got it. Okay. Truncate should handle it. And I, I haven't kept up with the with the conversation on the list, but has there been any discussion about maybe a handler? Like trigger mm -hmm. being one option, maybe it's k-exec, maybe it's it's just writing one to a file in, in security FS. But then the the option of uh, the action of snapshotting and copying, maybe like a like the core dump handler, for example. Some process gets gets registered as being the thing that's going to handle these these events being uh, truncated and copied to disk. If, if there was a specific handler that could be registered at boot time, perhaps uh, some of these operations could be simplified to to just uh, the kernel executing this handler, piping all these events through standard in, and letting the handler operate however it wishes. We started with a lot of 
complex uh, desires yeah. when we uh, proposed it and the, the uh, if you follow the links on the the thread it it went into multiple directions what clients can do and what Correct. servers can do and consistency and reliability related ones okay. but to summarize it was a very valuable suggestion from the Linux IMA maintainers to keep it simple. Mm. And the simplest approach is to just let kernel handle the truncate. That yeah. will keep the logic very simple. Rest of the stuff can be done from user mode. The trigger slash copy uh, can be handled from user mode. There is a benefit of having multiple triggers from the and some from the kernel side like uh, on kexec and if it reaches certain uh, ima event counts but that doesn't really need to happen you can just assume that hey i have copied last k entries it can be the starting event you yeah. technically you don't even need a trigger ima event but uh, right. the truncate has to be there and if you just have truncate then i i think it it is still doable okay thank you sure So to, an to answer the question, it was ba the original design required a lot of locking, and because of the locking, um, we decided that let's keep it simple and let's prevent um, additional locking. Thanks, Mimi. Uh, so the locking, the 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 desire behind the locking was to make sure that it is synchronous and no loss of events, uh, but maybe it is not needed. I think we are at time. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for attending this one and for your questions. Appreciate it. <laughs>